Episode 38, The Secret Keeper. Amy was shocked to know that Blair told him about a four-year-old kid. But if she was married this whole time, she should have mentioned something about the wedding or the man. And if she has a four-year-old kid, that means she might have gotten married five years ago. But then five years ago, Amy wondered. As soon as she realized what it was, She was even more shocked. So does that mean he is... Oh my gosh, it is Dan's child. She was betrayed by Dan five years ago. Then yes, that makes so much sense now, thought Amy. Amy was deeply hurt and disappointed with Blair. She began to think, this is how she paid me for being her best friend all these years? I forgave her for keeping things from me. I even forgave her for not staying in touch with me for five years. And now she did not even tell me that she has a child. And that too with Dan Scott's. How could she do this to me? Amy wanted to go to Blair's cabin and lash out at her. She was desperate to ask her all the questions that she had in her mind. But then after some thinking, she decided not to confront her. When Neil noticed Amy all quiet, he asked her, Hey, Amy, what happened to you? Why aren't you saying anything? She pretended to smile and that everything was okay. No, nothing, Neil. Well, she never said a word to me about any four-year-old kid, Amy replied. Hearing her response, Neil added, Don't you think it is a little shocking and unfair? I mean, you have been friends with her for so long, but you don't even know if she's married or not. The way Neil was so direct about the situation, Amy felt embarrassed and even more hurt. Seeing her expressions, Neil sensed that he shouldn't have asked her this so directly. So then, in order to cover up, he immediately spoke. So anyway, could you please talk to her and find out if she is married or not? Neil's question had pushed Amy into a huge dilemma. She was unable to keep aside her ego and discuss her personal life. She thought that if Blair did not mention a word about her child to her, then what was the point of meddling in her personal life? She wanted to break all ties with her. But then seeing Neil interested in her, she couldn't say no. She simply nodded. Sure, Neil. Anything for you. I will talk to her and let you know, she replied softly. She then got up and left the cabin. During the lunch party, Neil, Blair, and Amy were sitting at the same table. Blair had no idea about the conversation that Neil and Amy had a while ago. So she looked cheerful and happy. In fact, Neil was in a good mood too. It was just Amy who was crushed. Soon, Blair was able to gauge her best friend's mood. So in order to cheer her up, she said, Hey, Amy, look at me, please. Amy was not expecting Blair to fool around. So she was startled and then looked at her and asked, Why, what happened? Do I have something on my face? Blair found her reaction very funny, but she controlled her emotions and she held her chin and said, Just a little left. Amy turned her face towards a little left. What is it? What happened, Blair? Asked Amy. Blair totally ignored her question and then started to fiddle with her face. She checked all the angles of her face and then replied, Well, everything seems normal and totally perfect. Why do you look so angry? Amy smiled and Neil started laughing. But then Amy controlled her laugh and continued eating. Neil got up and went to get coffee for them. As soon as he was gone, Blair dragged her chair closer to Amy's. What happened, Amy? It seems someone has robbed a million dollars from your place. Tell me, please, Blair insisted. Amy was so mad at her that she finally lashed out. Look, Blair, you aren't as innocent as you pretend to be. Stop the drama. 
Amy remarked furiously. Blair was shocked to see Amy treat her like that. They seldom had such fights when Amy spoke to her like that. Blair took a deep breath and then asked her softly, What is wrong with you, Amy? What have I done? Why are you so mad at me? Amy felt that Blair was only pretending to be bothered. She felt that it was all a drama. So she smiled sarcastically and answered, Huh, enough, Blair. There is a limit to everything. And I must appreciate your great acting skills. I am impressed, babe. I don't know why you are even here. But take this as a warning. Whatever you are planning to do, and whatever games you are playing... Just keep Neil out of it. Do not even think of using him as a pawn. Get that straight. Blair was devastated. She couldn't have imagined in her worst nightmares that her best friend would misunderstand her so much. Before Blair could say a word in her defense, Neil was back with coffee. Perhaps he had heard what Amy said. He placed the tray on the table and then asked the two of them, What happened? What games are you playing? Blair was on the verge of crying. She bent her head down to hide her tears. Nothing, Neil. Some people are too fond of chess and other games. And then often these people start playing with relationships and people's emotions just to achieve some stupid motive, Amy replied sarcastically. Neil sensed that Blair and Amy had a terrible fallout. He figured they both had a very intense conversation. For some reason, Neil hated the way Amy was treating Blair. But before he could calm her down, Ben called him in his cabin. Excuse me, girls, said Neil, and he left. Amy and Blair were once again all alone at the table. Blair wanted to get out of that place and far away from her sight. But then she knew that if she would leave the conversation unfinished, then that would affect her friendship with Amy. So she pulled herself together and then tried to sort things out. So Amy, I would really appreciate it if you could tell me what happened. All these things that you just said are not just mean, but they don't even make any sense. However, if you explain things to me, then I would leave no stone unturned to justify things. And if I have done something that terrible, then I would do everything to make it up to you. But you gotta speak up, said Blair. Amy was not ready to calm down. Why, Blair? Why do I need to ask or tell? Was our bond always like this? Did we always have to sit and clarify things? Why do I need to ask you anything at all? Why don't you tell me things? What is with all the secrets? My entire family knows that you hold a very special place in my life and you are my best friend. And today, when I found out that you have a four-year-old kid, could you even imagine how embarrassed I felt having heard such vital information about your life from someone else? Moreover, my family is so eager to see you get married to Neil and now they are wondering if you are married or not. And when I asked about your personal life, I sat there quietly, absolutely clueless. She replied sarcastically. Blair took a deep breath. She saw this coming. She knew that sooner or later, Amy would get to know about Aaron, especially after she had spoken about him with Neil. Therefore, she was mentally prepared to face it. She drank some water and then began to explain. I am not married, Amy. I never got married. About Aaron, he is my responsibility. That day at your place during your grandma's birthday bash... I sensed what was going on in everyone's mind. Therefore, I had to tell Neil about Aaron. I did not want anyone to create an issue about Aaron later on. Amy was attentively listening to every word that came out of her mouth. Without blinking, she was trying to process all the information. But Blair had still not mentioned a word about Aaron's father. Today, Dan was all excited and peppy. He was ecstatic about the new project, and he wanted to put his heart and soul to make it successful. The recent loss of two important clients had led to a huge impact on the company's profits. Hence, it was imperative for Dan to handle the Chanel project wisely. In addition to that, 
He was glad that Blair was going to handle the project too. He knew that would give him several opportunities to get closer to her. Although his eyes were stuck on his laptop, his mind was flooded with thoughts of Blair. Dan had spent the entire day completing all the formalities related to the new project. As soon as the clock struck six, Dan got up, packed his stuff, and went straight to the parking lot. He suddenly noticed Alyssa walking towards him. He was not expecting to see her there. Alyssa smiled and asked, Don't look so surprised. Won't you even ask me what I am doing here? Dan walked casually towards his car and asked, Well, if I don't ask, would you not tell me? Anyway, I was coming to your place. I thought we haven't talked properly in a while, so I thought maybe we could have dinner together and catch up. Dan kept his coat in the back seat and replied, As much as Alyssa hated his first statement, she loved the second one. She was thrilled to see him making an effort. She started smiling. Oh my gosh, am I dreaming or what? She replied, Dan sensed the sarcasm, but then he opened the front car door for her and said, Get in. Let's go somewhere and have dinner. For the first time in a long time, Dan was treating her so well. Alyssa was surprised and elated, and it seemed that she had misunderstood him about everything, and perhaps he really wanted to marry her. She smiled and got in the car. And what about my car? Do I just leave it here? It would be an honor for your company to have my car parked, Alyssa replied. Dan bent towards her and said, Give me the keys. Someone will drop it at your place. Alyssa took the car keys out of her bag and kept them on Dan's palm. Dan got out of the car and went to the security and gave the keys to him. He was then back in his car and drove out of the parking lot. Alyssa was in seventh heaven to get that attention and warmth from Dan She had been waiting for him to be that way for a long time. But she couldn't figure out what happened that had changed his behavior so much. Dan was a very stubborn person, and he knew how to take a stand for himself. If he had made up his mind to do something or to not do something, the entire universe couldn't conspire against him. So what could have possibly changed him so much? While Alyssa was trying to guess the reasons behind the sudden change in his behavior, Dan stopped the car. She saw the board of Canlis and was thrilled to be there. Wow, I didn't even realize that we reached. I love this place, said Alyssa. She grabbed her bag and before she could open the car door, Dan opened it for her and smiled. Oh yes, we reached, Dan stated. She got out of the car and they both entered the restaurant. The place was dimly lit and the staff was dressed nicely and was fully groomed. Dan picked a table and said, Hey, come on, let's sit here. As you say, replied Alyssa. Let's order some coffee first, Dan suggested. Alyssa was staring at him. What are you looking at? Dan interrupted. Alyssa smiled and replied, Oh, nothing. Just gazing at the famous industrialist Mr. Dan Scott and his unpredictable moves. You know what? I often think that I would end up spending my whole life decoding you. (laughs) Oh, Dan started laughing. The waiter was at their table waiting for them to place an order. Soon, the coffee was served. Dan took the first sip and asked, Besides being your fiancé, am I not your friend? Alyssa was a little confused now. Um, yes, of course. In fact, I think that being friends with your partner is essential. And nobody could be a better friend than your partner, she replied with a lot of hesitation. Dan figured that Alyssa was up to something. So he quickly asked her, Are you wondering what changed? The man who had been avoiding you for the last few days is being so good to you today? Alyssa took a sip and asked dramatically, Oh, so you are accepting that you have been avoiding me? Dan was trapped in his own words. So to cover up, he tried to handle the conversation. Of course, had I not ignored you, I wouldn't have mentioned it, right? 
But the only reason behind it was that I was occupied with loads of work at the office. And then I had to take care of a few other things too, Dan explained. Alyssa was not fully convinced. She did not buy those reasons. She knew very well the actual reasons behind his behavior the past few weeks. But she did not let Dan know. She smiled and pretended to understand. Dan took another sip of his coffee and spoke. Anyway, I brought you here to share some great news. Alyssa got a little nervous as soon as Dan mentioned good news. She secretly started hoping it would not be something that she was scared of. Dan stared at her and then informed, So we finally acquired the Chanel project. Alyssa took a deep breath and then replied softly, Okay, congratulations. In the end, exactly the same thing happened that she was scared of. She knew what he was about to tell her. Episode 39, An Urgent Visit to Paris Alyssa's heart was pounding. She felt like getting up and leaving, as that was the only way to avoid further conversation with Dan and to hear what she was afraid to. But she didn't know how to. No matter how desperate she was not to continue the conversation, she couldn't have just left. And then Dan said exactly what she didn't want him to. He took the last sip of his coffee and kept the cup aside on the table. He then held her hand and asked, What happened to you? Why are you so cold? Aren't you feeling well? Alyssa nodded her head in a no and replied, Oh no, the AC. The temperature is too low here. Dan realized something and decided to not say anything further. After lunch was over, Amy went straight to Neil's place. A little later, when Neil got free from dinner, Neil was glad to find her alone to strike a conversation. He asked her about Blair. <clears throat> so did you get the chance to speak to Blair? You know, about her being married or not? Asked Neil. Amy was irritated about the question. Neil, Blair is neither the first nor the last woman to be alive, right? There are thousands of other women. Why can't you just forget her? Asked Amy. Neil tried to calm her down and asked, Hey, w what happened? Why are you talking to me like this? Did you get into a fight with her? As soon as Neil tried to pacify her, Amy realized that she was being rude to him just because of her best friend. She quickly responded to lighten things. Sorry, Neil. I didn't mean to sound rude. I, I really am sorry. When Neil saw her getting embarrassed because of her behavior, he caressed her head and responded, Hey, it's okay. It happens. I understand. When Amy was convinced that Neil understood the situation and wasn't mad at her for being rude, she continued, Neil, listen, she isn't married, okay? But she has a kid, and when I asked her more about the child, all she said was that he was her responsibility. And what I think is that probably she has adopted him, Amy informed Neil was relieved and on cloud nine upon hearing that Blair was not married, but he made a conscious effort to ensure that he didn't make it evident. Jeremy and Dan were discussing things in the office when Bart walked in. Dan was shocked to find Alyssa following Bart inside his cabin. He stood up and welcomed both of them. Hey, Dad. Hi, Alyssa. What brings you here early in the morning? Asked Dan. When Jeremy realized that almost the whole family was in the cabin, he decided to get up and take a leave. I must go. I will see you later, Mr. Scott. As soon as Jeremy left, Bart and Alyssa occupied the chairs and got comfortable. Well, Dan, I was thinking that considering we have finally got the Chanel project, the workload has gone tremendously up. 
and I am sure it is getting tough. So I've decided that Alyssa could start assisting you. It won't just reduce your workload, but also would make things fun, said Bart Scott. Dan was not just shocked, but scared of the thought of having Alyssa around at all times. Therefore, he immediately replied, Oh, that is a lovely thought, but it is not needed. I have plenty of people here to support me, and anyway, she should focus on her studies. Being there all the time would affect her studies in many ways. Before Bart could say another word, Alyssa jumped in. Well, Dan, I appreciate the concern, but my exams are over for the first year, and I am unoccupied. I have no problem being here and supporting you. I am too bored being home all day long doing nothing. So reporting to work for a few days would be a productive way for me to spend my days, Alyssa informed. The way Alyssa went overboard with her explanation, Dan could not bring himself to say anything else. But then a few minutes later, he realized he should make one last attempt to stop this from happening. Dad, listen to me, please. This is not some random small project that I could let anyone come and offer assistance. I require knowledge and expertise here. I cannot afford to take any risks, Dan concluded. This pissed his father off. Listen, son, enough already. Someone is being so caring and worried, and here you are coming up with all sorts of silly reasons to not let her assist you. What makes you behave this way? Why are you so insensitive? He yelled at Dan. Seeing Bart lose his calm, Dan decided to stay quiet, and Alyssa had a huge smile on her face as if she won a battle. Dan understood exactly what was going on. He sensed what Alyssa was up to. He knew that Alyssa pulled this stunt simply because she wanted to stay around him. But considering Bart was supporting her, he could not do much about it. Soon, Bart and Alyssa left from there, and Dan sat there, all alone, pitying himself. While he was thinking and processing everything that had happened since morning, his phone buzzed. He found a familiar number flash on his screen. He answered the call and heard a familiar voice. Hi, Mr. Dan Scott. Good morning. So how are you? Dan immediately identified him. It was the same person who had sent the pictures on WhatsApp the other day. I'm doing good, thanks. So you tell me? Have you made a decision yet? Do you plan to tell me what you want? Dan replied immediately. The person on the other line laughed mysteriously. Well, if I hadn't intended to tell you my demands, I would have neither sent the pictures to you nor called you again, answered the man on the other side. Okay, that makes sense. So what is your motive behind sending those pictures to me? Asked Dan in a very serious tone. Okay then, since you are forcing me so much, I must tell you. Do you even realize the consequences of these pictures being exposed to the public? Could you even imagine what would happen if people could access them? Asked the person on the other side. The man took a short pause to wait for Dan to process what he had just said. Mr. Whoever, you have already told me these things. I am fully aware of the consequences they could have, all right? So please try and be a little straightforward and tell me what you want, asked Dan. Well, so to be honest and straightforward, the thing is that if you don't want these pictures to go public, you would have to break all ties with that woman and her child, said the man with a sharp tone. Dan couldn't have seen this coming. He was shocked. His mouth widened. Although he figured who was he referring to, he pretended to not understand and asked, What? I don't understand. As soon as these words came out of Dan's mouth, the man on the other side snapped and replied angrily, Mr. Dan Scott, stop being so innocent. 
You know who I am talking about? I am talking about Blair and her son, Aaron. So now you know, right? Dan ignored the rage in his voice and asked, Who told you that I have any sort of relationship with Blair or her son? What? Who told me? Let's not get into all this, okay? It would only waste your and my time. Just so you know, that child is not yours, informed the man. Dan was pissed off. Whether he is my child or not, you don't need to bother. Stay out of it. And I am not giving any authority to anyone to take decisions of my life on my behalf. So keep your suggestions in your pocket, Dan yelled angrily. The way Dan responded, the man on the other line reacted instantly. Okay, then fine. If you are not interested in this deal, then let it be. I would just get on a call with a few media houses and sell these pictures to them at a great rate. You don't have any idea the price they would pay me for these fabulous pictures. Without waiting for his response, he disconnected the call. Dan kept staring at his phone screen for a long time. The way that man had disconnected the call made him more nervous and worried. He started wondering if he should agree to his terms. Neil and Blair were sitting opposite each other in the conference room. Blair's presentation was being played on the projector. Blair's phone rang, so she left the room to answer the call. Excuse me, Mr. Archibald said Blair. As soon as Blair looked at her phone, she found a French number flash on the screen. She answered the call. Hello? said Blair. Blair was worried listening to what she was told by the person on the other side. She finished the conversation and went back to the conference room. Neil observed the tension on her face and asked right away, Hey, Miss Cooper, is everything okay? Who called you? You look worried. Blair was quiet and did not know if she should tell Neil anything or not. Mr. Archibald, I don't know if I should talk about this or not, but I think I must, replied Blair. Neil shut his laptop and looked her in the eye. Hey, you can tell me anything, whatever it is. Don't worry, said Neil, trying to comfort her. Blair felt nice when she found him asking her with much politeness. Well, I just got a call from Paris. I have to go there urgently for a few days, Blair informed. Neil was shocked to hear this. He replied to her with hesitation. But, Ms. Cooper, you know how important this project is, right? We can't afford to make a single mistake. It would cost us too much. Blair looked a bit embarrassed, and she said softly, I know, Mr. Archibald, I am fully aware. I know it is important for me to be here, but trust me when I say this. Going to Paris for a few days is more important than the project. I promise I won't let the work get impacted. I will not avoid work. Even when I would be in Paris, I would continue working. It is just about ten days. Blair was making every possible effort to convince him. Neil was confused. He sat there for a while, and then he decided something. Okay, cool, fine, if it is that important, then what could I say, right? But you would have to assure us that since you are going to Paris for your work, you would not let any delay in the work here, Neil demanded. I assure you, Mr. Archibald, I promise to not put any work on hold no matter what, Blair assured. She explained to him so effectively that he ended up approving her leave for ten days. Blair had to leave the same evening. As soon as she reached home, she started to pack her things, and then she realized that she must let her mother know. She called her immediately. As soon as Julia heard her voice, she answered, Hey, did you disappear? I thought of calling you, but then resisted, thinking that you must be busy. But you should miss me sometimes, don't you think? Asked Julia. Hearing a long lecture from her mother, Blair got irritated. Mom, 
Don't you think you have become a crybaby? You always complain. I was at your place on Sunday. It hasn't even been a week, and now I have called you. But you can't seem to let go of any opportunity to say things to me, Blair replied. Julia felt a bit embarrassed. She felt guilty about always sulking. Okay, okay, fine. I'm sorry I won't do this again. So tell me, why have you called? Is everything okay? Asked Julia. While fitting her clothes in her bag, Blair replied, Yes, that is why I have called you. But you distracted me with all the sulking. Anyway, I got a call from Mr. Bernard from Paris. There have been some problems there. So I have to go there urgently. I would take a week or two. I would keep calling Aaron from there. Just explain to him that I won't be able to visit him for a few days. Hmm. Okay, love. I would let Aaron know. Don't worry about him. But did Mr. Bernard inform you what was so urgent and why does he want you there so soon? Asked Julia. No, mother. He sounded panicked and nervous, so I didn't ask him much. So I am leaving for the airport now. I will keep you posted. I would get to know more once I reach, Blair concluded. Sure. Take care of yourself. Don't skip meals, okay? Stay safe and ping me once you reach. I love you, said Julia, and then she disconnected the call. Blair's flight was scheduled for 7 p.m., so she packed all her stuff and called a cab. The cab was supposed to reach in 10 minutes. She locked her door and shut all the windows and dragged her bag out of her apartment and started waiting for the cab. It was over 10 minutes, but the cab hadn't arrived. She called the cab driver to follow up and he told her that he was stuck in a traffic jam. Blair did not have the time to wait any longer or book another cab, so she decided to take the train. She rushed towards the subway. She finally boarded the train and breathed a sigh of relief. As soon as she reached the airport, she got her boarding pass and went straight to the waiting area. The airport was crowded, and amid so many people, Blair felt lonelier than ever. She took a deep breath and observed people kill time. She suddenly spotted a couple, and then the man looked familiar. The woman's face was covered with a scarf, so she couldn't recognize her. But the man was none other than Bart Scott. She was shocked to see him with that woman. Bart Scott? Episode 40, The Certificate of Marriage Blair was shocked to find Bart Scott with that lady. She started wondering who this woman could be. And then suddenly, she recalled, Vanessa Hughes. Oh yes, isn't she Vanessa Hughes, that supermodel? Thought Blair. Blair tried hard to take another strong look and was able to recognize her. That is her. So does that mean Mr. Bart Scott is still in a relationship with Vanessa Hughes? Blair had a thousand thoughts in her mind. Amidst these thoughts, suddenly her phone started ringing. She saw Dan's number flashing on her phone screen. She answered the call right away. Hello? Answered Blair. I have to discuss something with you. It is about the Chanel project. So can we meet, please? asked Dan. Blair responded right away. No, I, I can't meet you. Hearing her refusing to meet outright made Dan upset. He went quiet. Blair sensed that she might have sounded rude. She tried to cover up and said, Well, actually, I'm flying to Paris tonight and I won't be back in ten days. So I will see you when I am back, Blair informed. For some reason, Dan was sad knowing that she would be gone for 10 days. Although it was only a matter of 10 days, Dan was not very comfortable with it. While he was lost analyzing how upset he was, Blair remembered Bart Scott and Vanessa Hughes. She wasn't sure if she should inform Dan about what she had seen. And while she was still trying to decide, Dan interrupted. Okay, Fine then, 
We will meet once you are back. Well, if it is anything urgent, then we could talk over the phone. Video call, maybe? Blair suggested apprehensively. Okay, sure, said Dan. And when he was about to disconnect the call, Blair couldn't resist and interrupted. Mr. Scott, I, I wanted to tell you something. Dan's heart was pounding. He had no idea what she was about to tell him. He started hoping for the best. He started wondering if she was about to tell him her feelings. What if she felt the same things that Dan did? Yes, yes, sure, said Dan right away with excitement. Blair was slightly hesitant to say, but then she finally gathered some courage. Well, Dan, um, into Mr. Scott. The thing is that I just saw Mr. Bart Scott at the airport, Blair blurted. Dan was a little disappointed to hear this. He had imagined so many wonderful things in no time. Then he said sadly, Yes, I know. He is going to Singapore. Okay, but I saw him with a woman, and I think it was Vanessa Hughes. I don't know if I should even be saying this or not, but I was wondering if they are still together, Blair inquired cautiously. Dan was shocked to hear this. He suddenly remembered about the blackmailing. In fact, he wanted to discuss certain things related to this with Blair. He wanted to find out if she knew this person who was trying to blackmail him and to create a problem between them. He was also worried thinking about those pictures. The pictures were clicked at a church, and both Bart Scott and Vanessa Hughes were wearing wedding outfits and were getting married. So does that mean those pictures were real? I don't believe this. Even after all these years, Dad is still seeing Vanessa Hughes? thought Dan. All these things were quite shocking for Dan. He couldn't have imagined things to get so intense and serious between his father and Vanessa Hughes. And then the announcements were started for Blair's flight. She quickly spoke. Mr. Scott, I have to go now. I will talk to you later. Probably once I reach Paris. Hmm. Okay, sure. But do call, okay? I need to talk to you about certain things, answered Dan. They both concluded their conversation with a bye and then disconnected the call. As soon as the call was over, Dan started thinking like a flash. And as a quick trigger, should I confront Dad about this? Dan thought. A part of him was 100% sure that he must tell everything directly to his father but then he lacked the courage to talk to him about his personal life. Dan was totally spent when he reached home. Although he seldom got the chance to meet Blair, that evening was different. In her absence from the city, the entire city seemed to be weeping and appeared gloomy. He had never been in such a condition. But this condition of his was a result of his insatiable love for her. He was suffering in her absence. Amidst the pain, he also found everything a little funny. He couldn't believe that he was in a condition like that. He had never thought of himself as someone who was capable of loving someone so deeply. He then walked towards the small bar in his living room. All he wanted to do was to get fully drunk and think of her. He poured some wine into his glass, and even before he could take a sip, the doorbell rang. He placed the glass back on the bar counter and murmured, Oh no, who could it be now? When Blair boarded the flight, she kept her sling bag on her lap and closed her eyes for some time. She wanted to relax for a while. She started thinking about Dan. What did he want to talk about? What could it be? Blair thought. Blair already knew that Dan was getting attached to her. It was not a secret. She sensed the changes in his attitude and behavior towards her. And then amidst this, when Dan expressed his wish to meet her, it all indicated something related to the sudden change in his behavior. On the other hand, 
She couldn't figure out why had Mr. Bernard called her on such short notice. Was it related to his health? Was he expecting to not live longer, and that is why he wanted to take all the important decisions as soon as possible? Blair had fallen asleep thinking about all these things. The continuous calls on Dan's phone had forced him to wake up the next day. Somehow, he managed to open his eyes and picked up his phone. He was very sleepy, and when he checked the time, it was half past 11. He couldn't believe his eyes. He got up in a panic and checked the time again. He took his watch out of the bedside table drawer and saw the same time. Oh no, 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 no. How could I sleep till almost noon? How much did I even drink? Wondered Dan. He had a terrible hangover. He pulled his hair in anger and tried to recall the incidents from the previous night. He had poured the wine in the glass, and before he could even take one sip, the doorbell had rung, recalled Dan. He tried to think harder. I opened the door. Alyssa was standing there. She walked into the apartment and started drinking with me. But then what happened? Dan thought. Suddenly, Dan's phone buzzed again. Dan was so occupied trying to recall the incidents from the previous night that he totally forgot that he had woken up as someone was constantly calling him. He looked at the screen of the phone and found Jeremy calling. He answered the call right away. Hello? Yes, Jeremy. Sir, where are you? Is everything okay? You aren't at work yet. Are you fine, Mr. Scott? He sounded nervous and replied immediately. Jeremy asked too many questions in just one go. Dan tried to calm him down. Hey, Jeremy, relax. Just calm down, would you? Everything is absolutely fine. I just ended up drinking too much last night, so I couldn't wake up on time. I would reach the office in an hour, all right? Dan was about to disconnect the call when Jeremy interrupted. "Um, Mr. Scott, actually, I had to tell you something. Well, Ms. Andrews is in the office and she is in your cabin. She has asked for all the files related to the Chanel project. I tried to refuse many times, but she is adamant... So I gave her a few irrelevant files, but she figured that. So now it is becoming hard for me to not give her the actual important files, Jeremy informed. Dan was shocked to know that Alyssa was in the office, in her cabin. She was with me almost the entire night. What was the point of reaching the office so early today? Maybe she is actually interested and serious about joining work, Dan thought. Dan removed his blanket and left the bed. Listen, Jeremy, please handle her for one more hour. I will be there as soon as possible, Dan instructed. Okay, sir, I would try my best, said Jeremy, and then he disconnected the call. Dan went straight to the washroom and started getting dressed for the office. Dan quickly got dressed and reached the office. He found Jeremy waiting for him at the reception. They both went to Dan's cabin. Dan pushed open the door of his cabin and barged in. Seeing him, Alyssa smiled and then welcomed him inside. Dan completely ignored her joy and expressions and asked, Okay, so what are you doing in my cabin, Alyssa? She gauged his mood, but she smiled and ignored it shamelessly. Oh, my darling... Did you forget what your father had mentioned the other day? She asked with a sly smile. Alyssa then got up and got closer to Dan. Seeing her getting so close, Dan got a little uncomfortable as always. Jeremy, I will see you later, said Dan. Jeremy figured that he wanted him to leave his cabin, so he replied, Oh yes, sure, Mr. Scott. And then he left. As soon as Jeremy left the cabin, Dan was relieved. He then turned towards Alyssa and spoke annoyingly. Look, Alyssa, behave yourself. If you want to work here with me, then you need to start respecting the rules and follow them diligently. You are here to assist me and not to make things filthy. 
Please do not ruin the professional environment that we maintain here. Alyssa was shocked to hear him talk to her in that manner. She felt extremely humiliated and insulted, but she had made up her mind to not waste this opportunity, and she had decided to not leave. Therefore, she pulled herself together and tried to stay calm. She folded her arms and replied, Okay, I understand. It is your utmost responsibility to train me. Dan took a deep breath and occupied his chair. Look, Alyssa, I tried to explain to you yesterday, and I am making another attempt today. This is not a small company where you could just walk in and start taking up responsibilities of such a high post, especially considering the kinds of projects we are handling at the moment. They are very crucial. The Millennium's future depends on them. We are not in a position to take any risk, said Dan. Although Alyssa hated every single word that came out of his mouth, deep down, she knew that he was being logical. And thus, she couldn't say a word to challenge him. When Dan realized that Alyssa was being an attentive listener and not arguing, he figured that the ball was in his court. He took advantage of the opportunity and continued... So instead of sitting in my cabin, I suggest that you visit every department and try to get an overview. Understand how every department functions and what are their key responsibility areas. And more importantly, I am sure you want to achieve something based on your merit and potential and not using my name or any other connection. You must get to a higher position when you are ready for it and when you deserve it. Dan concluded. Everything that Dan said pissed Alyssa off, and she knew that he would have to pay back for the way he was treating her. She took pride in believing that he would make things so messed up for Dan that he would regret it later. When Dan saw her standing there, not uttering a word, he asked, So what happened? What is on your mind? Alyssa was startled as if she just woke up from a bad dream. Oh no, nothing at all. Anyway, I will go to the creation department now. I would work closely with them and observe them for a few days, and then you could guide me further, answered Alyssa. When Dan heard her agreeing to what he had said, he was elated and relieved. He immediately replied, Oh yes, that sounds nice. Alyssa picked up her bag and replied, Okay then, let's meet for lunch. Bye. She then smiled and left his cabin. Even while leaving, she left Dan in another state of discomfort. Bye, said Dan. As soon as she was out of his cabin, Dan took a deep breath and closed his eyes. He suddenly realized something and called Jeremy into his cabin. Jeremy was soon in his cabin. He had carried a few files along. He placed them on Dan's table. So, Mr. Scott, finally, Ms. Andrews would visit here every day? Jeremy curiously asked. Seems like it. But Jeremy, to be honest with you, for some reason I am not getting any positive vibes. For the first few days, I need her to be watched at all times. You are getting my point, right? Instructed Dan. Jeremy was a little shocked to find Dan talking about his to-be wife, but then he had always been a fan of Dan's intelligence, so he nodded and agreed. Sure, Mr. Scott, as you say, I would personally watch her, said Jeremy. Perfect, but make sure she doesn't get to know anything about this, Dan replied. Jeremy got up and answered, Sure, sir, you don't have to worry. I will handle it. Then he left the cabin. Dan started to go through the files that Jeremy had left on his desk. While he was flipping through the pages, he suddenly spotted a few papers on his table. They had Alyssa's and his passport size pictures. He picked those papers and started to read them with full attention. Seeing the title on those papers, his world turned upside down. In bold letters, the title read out, Certification of Marriage. Certification of Marriage. 